Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's been a while since we've given Fender some love. I've had these sitting over here the past couple of unboxing episodes. Let's go ahead and review and demo the 70th anniversary Esquire. So if you're not familiar with the whole Esquire thing, it's essentially the first Telecaster because this thing was introduced in 1950 as Fender's first solid body electric guitar, single cutaway, all that good stuff. But then over the course of a year, eventually the Telecaster came out. Now, obviously it wasn't called the Telecaster right away. You can check out my 70th anniversary broadcaster review for a little bit more information, but you went Esquire evolved into broadcaster then broadcaster had to be taken off. And then collectors now call them the no casters before finally in 1951 one we get the Telecaster. So that's just some brief history for you guys. I mean today it's all about the guitar. I've never actually had an Esquire and for people who are more akin to like Gibson stuff it's kind of like a Les Paul Jr. kind of. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Oh wow that looks nice. I dig this case. Now, if that's one thing that I love about Fenders is the ones that have this like vintage burnt orange case. It kind of looks holographic at the same time. Pair that with this uh, two-tone colored sunburst thing. This is looking pretty cool. I'm honestly a little bit disappointed that it doesn't have a fancy emblem like the broadcaster had on the top lid. But at least it's a nice looking case. Only downside is this thing is shedding all over this guitar as you'll see here in a minute. Out of the box, you get that nice nitro lacquer smell. You get these hang tags we'll take off here. Some sort of a certificate of authenticity online lessons. And as far as the rest of our case candy, it looks like we get some sort of like a vintage looking leather strap. And I'm wondering if we have some sort of a cover in here. Yes, we do. We get the cover for the guitar. Impressive, we even get a little cable. So yeah, they just kind of uh, gave us a whole bunch of different case candy. But for the 70th anniversary in 2020, they decided to release this guitar. We got four different finishes. There's two kind of more traditional looking ones. I decided to go with this one because, you know, it looks very vintage-esque. And I really love that you can see the wood grain underneath it. I mean, it looks fantastic on this guitar, in my opinion. But you also have the options of a white blonde, which was kind of a close second for me. And then there's also surf green and Lake Placid blue if you're feeling like getting a vintage Esquire and a little bit more of a fruitier flavor. But these things, they're just shy of 2000 bucks, so they're not cheap, <laughs> but my knobs are falling off already. Did they not screw it all the way down? That'll be easy enough to fix on the workbench. So besides my knobs falling off, first impressions here, this is really light. That's something else that I wanted to check this thing out for is they used a pine body which I'm guessing that's what the original ones had, something like that. So, so I thought that was interesting, but you might be wondering, huh? Three-way toggle switch, one pickup. Uh, is there like a, a hidden pickup under here? Is it even routed for that? I guess we'll have to throw it on the workbench to find out. But I'd say based on first impressions, this actually feels nice. Fairly lightweight, but yeah, I feel like it'll still be balanced. We get a little bit of figuring in the neck, nothing too crazy. I do like the ringage, that's nice. And it looks like we get a little special neck plate back here. Very cool, let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench, get that knob back on there and get this sweet thing installed and take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the Esquire, let's take a deep dive. So not only is this a pine body, but it's actually a roasted pine body. So that's how they get some of the excess moisture out of these things. That also probably explains why they're pretty lightweight. So now the big question, underneath the pick guard, what sleeps here? You do have a neck pickup route if you choose to install it. You just have to get a different pick guard or cut your original guard. And apparently back in the 50s, there was a particular two pickup version of the Esquire before all that other stuff changed. But Fender history, it's not necessarily my strong suit. We're just taking a look at this guitar. I am happy to see this though, because when I saw a truss rod, it's like, okay, so they're not mimicking like the really early ones that don't necessarily have truss rods. But I saw that you don't have any access up here. So it's, it's nice to see that you don't actually have to take the neck off. You actually have that right there. But there you can see the barcode there. And you've just got a very tiny little channel right there to fit something through there. But here's something cool that they did. You've got your serial number right here, just like the originals. And originally on the Esquires, the bridge pickups here actually were borrowed from lap steel instruments. So they enlisted in the help of Tim Shaw in order to develop this one. Their marketing material said that he copied one that was at the Songbirds Museum. 
So they're saying this is like as close as you can get, but that's what it looks like. It just kind of looks like a regular tele pickup, honestly, but apparently they sound a little bit brighter. And you can see some more barcodes in here, buffing, polishing, compound, all that good stuff. But the bridge plate is just secured right here by four screws. Now it's kind of interesting about these guys, just like on our broadcaster review earlier, they use slotted screws. So that's a nice little vintage appointment to these guys that make them look a little bit older. Honestly, it just makes it a little bit more of a pain in the butt to install and take it apart. But hey, it, it looks cool. It looks cool. At least we got that going for it. So now let's dive into why this thing has a three pickup switch. So this, your traditional bridge position, it's just this pickup. The tone knob doesn't work. You just got the bridge and the volume control. When you get it in the middle position, that's what activates your tone. So it's just like a regular bridge pickup setup on anything else. But when you switch it into the neck position, since we do not have a neck pickup on this thing, they advertise it as having a preset treble roll off. Well, this thing's just falling apart. <laughs> okay, they, they say it has a, a preset treble roll off, which I'm guessing has something to do with this capacitor here or something like that. So it kind of makes it sound slightly like a neck pickup, but not necessarily a neck pickup. So we'll take a listen to that here in a minute. But here's what all this wiring looks like. Fender does a great job on their stuff. That looks very professional. But it looks like we have 250k pots in this guy. Yeah, we'll take a quick look at that cap. As far as the route itself, it looks okay. Now, as far as our pickup readings in the bridge pickup position, it's 8.09. In the middle with the tone, we get 8 point. It's pretty much the same. Then once you throw in that other stuff, yeah, nothing changes. So only other thing to mention, it's a string through guitar design. You don't even have the option to string it through back here. And you have three steel saddles. Moving on from the pine body, we get a solid maple neck, which means your fretboard's also maple. We've got 21 vintage tall frets, and it's a seven and a quarter inch radius. 25 and a half inch scale length. But as far as the neck shape, they're calling it a 50s U. It's big, but it's not like really wide feeling. It's honestly pretty comfortable to me, but it's not like R7 baseball bat in Gibson territory. Honestly, it starts off, you know, substantial, but a little bit thinner up here. But as you get up here, it's kind of like that 65 Melody Maker, you know, super beefy stuff. So let's go ahead and grab these dimensions. The bone nut measures 1.65 inches then 2.02 by the 12. First fret neck depth, I'm guessing what, 0.89 or so? Yeah, 0.88. And I would guess 0.95. Nope, even bigger, 0.1. Those numbers definitely make sense for what I was feeling. As far as the headstock, the old style tuners that you poke down and then wrap around, and then it says Fender Esquire with a single string tree. And before we move on to the back, I always thought like Esquires were just like 1950. No, these things actually continued on until 1969. So if you can't afford an original, original Esquire, you can still enjoy these all the way up almost until the 70s. So if you want a cool vintage guitar that not everyone else has, I mean, everybody's got a Telecaster, but not everybody has the Esquire. And there we go. That's what it looks like all put back together. Looks rather fancy, but old and vintage at the same time with this thing on here. Okay, so as far as QC or things that I think you should know about go, uh, the bridge securing screws, they don't actually stop turning. So I think that's a little bit concerning. They still hold it in place just fine. And most of these frets are just completely covered over in lacquer. Sometimes you find that some are worse than others. Some don't like it. I mean, you can pick some of it off if you want. You can see this frets kind of got some of that going on. I know there's always people who comment, oh, I hate the lacquer on the frets or whatnot. It'll normally wear off just with normal use anyways, but I thought I'd let you guys know. But as far as like major things, I didn't see anything. So I think we're pretty good to go on this guy. As far as the back, just beautiful wood grain. You can see the string through ferrules right there. The 70th anniversary Esquire neck plate. You get your strap buttons in your regular locations. And down here, you get your output jack on the side. As far as the neck, this is also a gloss nitro finish. So this whole guitar will age, finish, check, do all that good stuff that you like on the vintage ones. But we do have the skunk stripe back here. As far as the back of the headstock, we just have our Klusen style tuners that are single line. So how lightweight is lightweight? Six pounds, 11.7 ounces. That's really good. I mean, even if you take this ashtray off, it goes down to six pounds, 8.4, which is likely how you're going to play this thing. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, now that I've actually plugged this thing in, it's really simple. You're either gonna want it all the way down all the time, or you're just gonna want it in the middle. Honestly, I think the neck position's kinda worthless, but here, just hear it like this, and you'll be able to make your own judgments. <laughs> Sound familiar? So basically that neck position, it's like rolling your tone off a quarter of the way. I mean, it's doing something different, but in just layman's terms, if you just want it to be a little bit less bright, that's what you're gonna wanna switch to. So you're going from this to this. So I guess it's great if you don't want to mess around with a knob. I personally find it not that useful. But if you're a guy that does use your tone a lot, just leave it in the middle position and your guitar's normal. Very simple guitar to understand. I'm just gonna demo it without anything else in the circuit. I think you guys get the idea. Let's have some fun. It's just like a, a really spanky Telecaster. I can't tell you how much I've been enjoying this, just playing it clean. I guess let's find out what a little bit of dirt sounds like on these. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
this guitar is a lot of fun. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did. I mean, it's been a while since I've covered a Fender, so maybe that's just some of it. I've always said, you know, I prefer the look of Gibson guitars, but I think when it really comes down to it, Fender does have something special with these noisy single coil pickups. They've got a certain charm to them that's great for playing different stuff, but I really enjoyed this guitar. I think you should check one out if you like really spanky bright stuff. I'm sure this would get rather annoying to own if it was your only guitar, but just as something to do like lead work on, or if you just need an instrument to really focus on like doing solo stuff. I mean, this has to be one of the most comfortable Telecaster style guitars I've ever played. Normally, I'm not a big fan of the seven and a quarter inch radius, but I didn't feel anything bad about this thing. I mean, you can get all the notes up here. It's super lightweight. I'm rather impressed with it, to be honest. Is it rather expensive for 2000 bucks for what it is? Yes, but you also have to remember, it's a limited edition, so it will hold some value for the future. I mean, sure, you can build one of these a lot cheaper just through the parts caster stuff, warm and whatnot. That's always an argument I see on these Fender videos, but you won't have the resale value. And if you enjoy having the actual Fender branding on the guitar, it'll be worth it to buy the real deal. That's the way I feel. I mean, if you're just a strict player, you don't care about how much stuff's worth, yeah, just build your own, but... I had a great time with this. I'm glad I decided to make this review today. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in to today's episode of the Troglies Guitar Show. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. As far as blacklight test on this guy, nothing too fancy. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.